The alien warlord Keelar watched the humans futilely try to fight against his apex predators, grinning with razor-sharp teeth as the pathetic primates died savagely under gnashing fangs and slicing claws, knowing the humans would be helpless against his monsters. That is, until the humans started armoring bears and lions, turning them into murder machines aimed straight at Kalar's jugular. Report, Kellar barked. His red scales rippled as he turned to his second, a smaller reptilian with black and grey skin. What did our spies see on this planet of... Earth? The second read from a data pad. The Earth species calling themselves humans are weak and primitive, but they seem to have done something impossible. They have tamed the most deadly predators on their planet. Lions, bears, wolves, tigers. Instead of being eaten, the humans appear to have bent these apex killers to their will. The humans even trained them as partners to hunt other animals. Kalar flicked his forked tongue over his teeth. The idea of any species dominating apex predators was unthinkable. It went against the natural order. Back on planet Vulcan, Kalar had spent his life proving himself the apex predator, as was the Vulcan way. He had killed and eaten thousands on his path to power, including his own clutchmates. He feared nothing until now. The thought of losing control over a predator made his guts churn. No matter. His elite squad would put these humans back in their place under a predator's claws and teeth. Set course for Earth. I want to watch the life fade from these humans' eyes as their own tamed beasts rip out their throats. The ship's engines rumbled as it flew for the distant blue planet. Meanwhile, on Earth, alarms blared through a secret military base in the Rocky Mountains. Soldier and animal trainer Brian Hunter snapped to attention in the rocky cavern he used to train his squad. What's the alert? he shouted over the howling and roaring. His tiger, wolf, lion and bear fell into line, yellow eyes fixed on him. The leather and Kevlar armor across their flanks bore U.S. military insignia. Neural link chips glinted behind their ears, ready to translate his orders to them. Brian had spent years learning to work with these animals, but time had just run out. If he failed this next mission, and couldn't get his predators to cooperate, then all of humanity would end up as food for the alien monsters about to land on their planet. As the Vulcan ship pierced the blue skies of Earth, Kellar slammed a clawed fist on the control panel. Attack! Now! Dropships shot from the main craft, racing for the secret human base. Doors along the ship's side slid open and nightmarish shapes leaped out landing on the rocky slopes with heavy thuds. The Vulcan predators were twisted combinations of deadly earth species. A creature with a wolf's head and a tiger's striped body prowled forward on silent paws, its muscles rippling beneath armoured plates grafted into its flesh. Behind it stalked a monster with a grizzly bear's powerful frame and an alligator's toothy maw. Each beast moved with unnatural speed and grace, its eyes glowing with genetically enhanced bloodlust. Alarm screeched through the base as the outer perimeter fell to the onslaught of claws and teeth. Defensive positions! Brian roared, charging into the central chamber in full combat gear, his predators close on his heels. His wolf lifted its muzzle and howled, the eerie sound echoing off the steel walls. A pack of Vulcan beasts smashed through the front gates, screeching with alien hunger. Brian's tiger leaped to meet them, its Kevlar-sheathed claws ripping through flesh and metal. The lion and bear crashed into the fray, tearing and biting. For a moment, the two predator squads seemed evenly matched, a writhing mass of fur, skin, and blood. But the Vulcan monsters were bigger, stronger, and utterly savage. A superwolf clamped its jaws around the lion's neck, shaking it like a rat. The tiger fell beneath a pair of bear gaiters, its armor splitting under their talons. Brian fired blast after blast into the aliens, but they just kept coming, heedless of pain or death. Desperate, Brian tapped on his neural link, broadcasting a complex series of images into his animals' minds. The bear peeled away from the fight, galloping for the training arena. Brian dove after it, rolling beneath a claw swipe that would have taken his head off. The bear skidded to a halt and spun to face the alien monster that had followed them, the beast with a lion's head and bear's body. That's it, come on, Brian murmured through gritted teeth. The creature stalked closer, 
its black lips peeling back from fangs as long as knives. At the last second, Brian leaped aside and slapped the containment field control. Crackling bands of energy snapped into place around the Vulcan Predator. It roared and thrashed against the field, but couldn't break through. Brian linked to the neural chip he'd implanted in all the Vulcan beasts during the chaos, the one he used to train new animals. He shoved his way into the predator's mind, projecting feelings of calm and connection. The creature's struggles slowed, its fury dimming to confusion. It cocked its head, staring at him. In that moment of hesitation, Brian's wolf struck from the side, locking its jaws around a Vulcan bear gator's throat. His tiger and lion fell on the remaining aliens, dragging them down through sheer tenacity. Kilar watched the battle turn in the humans' favor, shock and rage warring in his chest. Retreat, he commanded, already plotting his revenge. His ship lifted away, Vulcan predators leaping back inside. Brian sagged to his knees in the sudden silence, his loyal animals standing guard around him. They had won this fight, but at a cost. The containment unit hummed, the captive beast still watching him with that unsettlingly intelligent gaze. He had to find a way to turn Kalar's own creatures against him, or humanity wouldn't survive the warlord's next attack. Brian hunched over the containment unit, his eyes bloodshot from lack of sleep. He had spent the past forty-eight hours studying the captive Vulcan predator, probing its mind with the neural link. The beast glared back at him, its lion eyes glittering with alien intelligence. What makes you tick? Brian muttered, scrolling through readouts on his datapad. The scans revealed a labyrinthine network of neural pathways, far more complex than any Earth creature. The Vulcans had genetically engineered these monsters to be perfect killing machines, but they had also made them smart. Brian wondered if that would be their undoing. He was about to run another simulation when alarms blared through the base. Code Red! a voice shouted over the loudspeakers. Hostile incoming! Brian sprinted outside, his predators falling into formation around him. He skidded to a halt, his heart freezing in his chest. A colossal shape was descending from the clouds, blotting out the sun. It looked like a dragon out of myth, with bat-like wings and armor-plated scales. As it drew closer, Brian could see the creature's eyes blazing with unnatural fire. God Almighty, he breathed. The dragon opened its fanged maw and roared, the sound like a thousand jet engines. Gouts of flame erupted from its throat, setting the forest ablaze. Brian's tiger snarled in fear, backing away. The wolf and bear shifted uneasily, sensing the overwhelming threat. Brian clenched his jaw. His usual tactics wouldn't work against a monster like this. Get everyone to the bunkers! Brian ordered his team. Then he turned and ran for the armory. He had one last desperate idea. If it failed, they were all dead. Minutes later, Brian stood alone on a rocky outcropping, watching the dragon lay waste to the countryside. Flames reflected in his dark eyes. In his hands, he clutched a modified neural link, one he had cobbled together from scraps and a prayer. The dragon wheeled in the sky and dove straight for him, claws outstretched. Brian held his ground, his heart hammering. At the last second, he rolled to the side, feeling the rush of displaced air as the beast thundered past. He leaped to his feet and sprinted after the dragon, his muscles burning. The creature swung its head around, molten eyes locking onto him. It reared back, jaws unhinging to release a torrent of fire. Brian zigzagged, the flames singeing his hair. He vaulted over a boulder and slid beneath the dragon's lashing tail. Lungs heaving, he jumped and grabbed onto the creature's neck, hauling himself onto its broad back. The dragon roared in fury, spinning in dizzying barrel rolls to throw him off. Brian clung on, inching toward its head. The dragon rolled again, slamming Brian against its armored flank. Pain shot through his chest, hot and bright. Something had broken inside him. Fighting for consciousness, Brian crawled the last few feet and slapped the neural link against the dragon's skull. Nothing happened. The dragon opened its jaws, ready to pluck him off like an insect. The neural link flared to life, glowing like a miniature sun. Brian gasped as his mind merged with the dragon's. A flood of images poured through the connection, 
the Vulcan labs where the creature had been made, the pain of the experiments, the rage it felt at its captors. And beneath all that, a spark of recognition. The dragon could sense Brian's connection with his own predators. It could feel the strength of that bond, the loyalty and trust. For a heartbeat, the dragon wavered, torn between its programmed bloodlust and this new, unfamiliar sensation. Brian pressed his advantage, projecting memories of his team, his family, directly into the dragon's consciousness. The creature shuddered, a low, keen building in its throat. It was working. Brian was getting through to it. Just as he felt the dragon's resistance crumble, an explosion rocked the valley. Brian twisted in his seat to see Vulcan ships descending from the clouds, disgorging packs of bio-engineered monsters. The alien predators stormed toward the human base, a chittering, howling tide of claws and teeth. On the lead ship, Kellar bared his fangs in a vicious grin. He had seen the human tame his ultimate weapon. Let the primate savor that small victory. Now, Kellar would force him to choose, stop the attack on the city, or maintain control of the dragon. He would tear the human apart with that choice. Brian swore viciously, his mind racing. The dragon, sensing his urgency, swiveled its head to look at him with one fiery eye. In that moment, Brian knew what he had to do. It was time to show the Vulcans what a real predator could do. Brian's hands gripped the dragon's armored scales as he urged the beast toward the besieged city. The wind tore at his face, his eyes watering from the stinging rush of air. Behind him, his tiger, lion, wolf, and bear raced through the streets, powerful legs eating up the distance. As they neared the heart of the battle, Brian focused his mind linking with the dragon's consciousness. Firewall, he commanded, projecting an image of the Vulcan predators and the fleeing civilians. Cut them off! The dragon roared, the sound rattling windows and setting off car alarms. It opened its maw and released a blistering torrent of flames, the searing heat washing over Brian in palpable waves. The fire cut a swathe through the city, creating a barrier of smoking rubble and melted asphalt between the alien beasts and their human prey. Brian's predators surged through the gap, teeth bared and claws unsheathed. They slammed into the Vulcan monsters like a tidal wave, the force of their charge sending the aliens reeling. Brian's tiger raked its Kevlar-shielded talons across a bear gator's face, shredding through flesh and bone. The wolf darted between a super wolf's legs, hamstringing it with a snap of powerful jaws. The lion and bear worked in tandem, one leaping high to crush a monster's spine while the other went low, tearing out its throat. Brian watched his team move with fluid precision, each animal anticipating the other's actions and responding in kind. They fought not as separate beings, but as a single, lethal unit, bonded by Brian's training and their own fierce loyalty. Kellar snarled as he watched his predators fall before the humans' coordinated assault. He slammed a clawed fist against his ship's control panel, the metal denting under the force of the blow. This could not stand. He would not be bested by some hairless primate and his pack of lesser beasts. The Vulcan warlord stalked to the armory, his eyes glittering with malice. He donned a battlesuit of gleaming black metal, the armor flowing over his scaled body like a second skin. The suit thrummed with power, alien servos and circuits enhancing Kalar's already formidable strength and speed to superhuman levels. Kalar flexed his claws, reveling in the suit's responsiveness. He would tear that human limb from limb and feast on his still-beating heart. With a roar of thrusters, Kellar leaped from his ship, landing in the midst of the battle with a shockwave of displaced air. Brian barely had time to react before Kellar was on him, the Vulcan's armor-enhanced blows raining down like sledgehammers. He twisted in his seat, the dragon's scales scraping his skin as he fought to evade Kellar's claws. The warlord was unrelenting, his attacks coming faster and harder with each passing second. Brian gritted his teeth, his muscles screaming as he parried and dodged. He could feel his strength flagging, his reflexes slowing. Kalar pressed his advantage, hammering at Brian's defenses until they shattered like glass. The Vulcan's claws raked across Brian's chest, the keen edges tearing through his body armor like paper. Brian screamed, 
the pain blinding in its intensity. He could feel his consciousness fraying, his hold on the dragon slipping. Kilar loomed over him, his eyes blazing with triumph. The warlord raised his claws for the killing blow, and the dragon's head snapped around, jaws opening wide. A gout of white-hot fire engulfed Keller, the flames so intense they seared Brian's exposed skin. The Vulcan howled, his armor melting and fusing to his flesh. He staggered back, beating frantically at the flames. The dragon lunged, clamping its jaws around Kilar's torso. The warlord's battlesuit crumpled like tin foil, the dragon's fangs punching through metal and bone. With a flex of its powerful neck, the dragon hurled Kilar away, sending him crashing through the facade of a nearby building. Kelar dragged himself from the rubble, his armor smoking and sparking. His scales were charred, the flesh beneath blistered and raw. He fixed Brian with a murderous glare, hate etched into every line of his face. Brian slumped against the dragon's neck, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The dragon rumbled beneath him, the sound almost questioning. Brian patted its armored flank, his hand leaving smears of blood on the glossy scales. We did it, big guy, he rasped. We won this round. Below, Brian's predators were mopping up the last of the Vulcan beasts, the alien monster's broken bodies littering the streets. The city was in ruins, buildings crumbled and fires raging out of control, but the civilians had escaped. They had saved countless lives. Brian surveyed the devastation, his eyes haunted. He knew this was only the beginning. Kalar would be back and he would bring the full might of the Vulcan Empire with him. Next time, a few trained animals and a mind-controlled dragon might not be enough. Brian clenched his fists, ignoring the pain lancing through his injured body. He had to find a way to end this war, once and for all, and that meant taking the fight to Kalar, on the warlord's own turf. It was a suicide mission. The chances of success were astronomically slim, but Brian knew he had no choice. For the sake of his planet, his team, and every living thing on Earth, he had to try. The dragon shifted beneath him, scales scraping against his armor. Brian took a deep breath and gazed up at the smoke-filled sky. Somewhere up there, beyond the clouds and the stars, Kalar was waiting. It was time to end this. Brian clenched his fists, ignoring the pain lancing through his injured body as he gazed up at the smoke-filled sky. Somewhere up there, beyond the clouds and stars, Kalar was waiting on planet Vulcan. Brian had to take the fight to the warlord's own turf. It was the only way to end this war. He turned to his team, eyes hard as flint. We're going to Vulcan, and we're taking that scaly bastard down on his own ground. His tiger growled low in its throat, hackles rising. The wolf's yellow eyes gleamed with fierce determination. Even the dragon rumbled its ascent, tail lashing. Brian strode to the captured Vulcan ship, the predator they had taken during the battle following docilely at his heels, its mind still linked to Brian's. The sleek craft looked like a crouching insect, all sharp angles and glossy chitin. As Brian approached, the neural link in his armor activated the ship's ramp, the hatch yawning open with a hiss of hydraulics. Inside, the ship was a nightmarish fusion of organic curves and harsh metal, like the belly of some giant beast. Crimson light pulsed along the walls, reminding Brian unnervingly of veins. He shook off the unease and climbed into the command chair, his hands moving instinctively over the controls. The neural link buzzed at the base of his skull as it connected to the ship's systems. Strap in, Brian called to his team. This is going to be a rough ride. With a thought, he brought the ship's engines online, feeling the deck vibrate beneath his feet as they lifted off. The tamed Vulcan predator settled at his side, its presence a constant reminder of the stakes they were facing. As they broke atmosphere, Brian input the stolen coordinates for Vulcan, watching the nav screen flicker and change. The ship lurched as it accelerated, stars blurring past the viewports. Brian gritted his teeth against the G-forces, his muscles screaming. Beside him, his wolf whined softly, claws scraping the deck. The journey stretched into hours, the blackness of space swallowing them whole. Brian used the time to study the schematics of Kalar's fortress, searching for weaknesses. 
The structure was a masterpiece of alien engineering, a vast labyrinth carved into the heart of a volcano. Every corridor was a potential kill box, every chamber a trap waiting to be sprung. But Brian had a few tricks up his sleeve. His mind raced as he planned and plotted, running countless scenarios. They would only have one shot at this, and failure was not an option. A chime from the nav computer jolted Brian from his musings. They were approaching Vulcan. Through the viewports the planet loomed like a malevolent eye, its surface a roiling mass of red and black. Jagged mountain ranges jutted from seas of molten lava, the air shimmering with heat. Brian's fingers flew over the controls as they entered the atmosphere, the ship bucking and shuddering around them. Alarms blared as the outer hull temperature spiked, the metal glowing cherry red. Brian's tiger roared in fear, the sound nearly lost in the cacophony. Using his link to the Vulcan Predator, Brian reached out with his mind, probing for the frequencies of the planet's defense grid. The alien systems pushed back, trying to force him out, but Brian gritted his teeth and pushed harder. Sweat beaded his brow as he strained against the network's firewalls, searching for a gap, a weakness. There, a flicker in the code, a brief opening. Brian seized it, pouring his consciousness into the breach. For a moment, he was everywhere at once, seeing through a thousand eyes, a million sensors. The defense grid stretched before him in a web of light, each node a glittering jewel. With a thought, Brian rewrote the ship's signature, masking their presence. To the sensors, they were just another Vulcan craft, unremarkable and unthreatening. The web parted around them like mist, allowing them to slip through undetected. Brian slumped back in his chair, head pounding, but there was no time to rest. They were entering the atmosphere, the ship vibrating around them as it knifed through the turbulent air. The fortress appeared on the horizon, a jagged black wound against the seething red sky. Towers of obsidian clawed at the heavens, their sides pockmarked with glowing apertures. Rivers of lava poured from cracks in the volcano's flanks, wreathing the structure in shimmering heat. Brian brought the ship down on a landing pad, jutting from the fortress's base, the impact jarring them in their seats. Before the engines had even spooled down, he was out of his chair and moving, his predators falling in behind him. The ramp lowered with a hiss, a blast of searing air washing over them. The Vulcan predator at Brian's side stirred, its nostrils flaring as it scented its homeworld. Brian laid a hand on its flank, feeling the heat of its armoured scales. Easy he murmured. We're all in this together now. He stepped out onto the landing pad, the volcanic rock crunching beneath his boots. In the distance, a bank of lava geysers erupted, painting the sky in shades of hellish red. Okay, team, Brian said, checking the charge on his pulse rifle. Let's go knock on the devil's door. They approached the fortress's main gates, a towering slab of black metal inscribed with alien glyphs, Brian signaled to the tamed predator, using their link to command it forward. The creature obeyed, stalking to the doors and standing before them expectantly. For a moment nothing happened. Then with a grinding rumble the gates began to open, hidden gears and chains clanking behind the walls. Brian tensed, rifle at the ready, as a sliver of ruddy light spilled forth. No alarm klaxons blared. No guards came rushing to meet them. The way stood open, inviting. Brian exchanged a glance with his team, seeing his own unease mirrored in their eyes. This felt wrong, like they were walking into the maw of some great beast. But they had come too far to turn back now. Stealing himself, Brian stepped over the threshold, the heat of Vulcan's molten heart enveloping him like the breath of a furnace. His predators followed close behind, claws clicking on the obsidian floor. The corridor beyond was cavernous and oppressive, the walls seeming to press in from all sides. Crimson light filtered down from glowing strips set into the ceiling, painting everything in shades of blood and fire. The air was thick with the stench of sulphur and scorched metal. As they ventured deeper into the fortress, Brian couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The back of his neck prickled, his instincts screaming danger. But whenever he spun around, pulse rifle at the ready, there was nothing but shadows and dancing light. The labyrinth seemed to go on forever, 
each twisting passageway leading to another. But Brian's link to the Vulcan Predator kept them on course, the creature's knowledge of its master's lair guiding them like a twisted compass. Finally, they emerged into a vast chamber, a cathedral of obsidian and pulsing crimson. Towering pillars stretched into the darkness above, their surfaces etched with strange, flowing script. The floor was a sea of black glass, reflecting the hellish light like a pool of blood. And at the chamber's heart, row upon row of transparent cylinders, each one containing a nightmarish form suspended in bubbling fluid, Vulcan predators, each more twisted and monstrous than the last, Kalar's abominations, his army of horrors waiting to be unleashed. Brian approached the nearest cylinder, his gorge rising as he took in the creature within. It was an obscene fusion of flesh and metal, its body a patchwork of grafted scales and cybernetic implants. Razor-tipped tentacles coiled and uncoiled in the viscous liquid, the creature's eyes glowing with malevolent intelligence. And there were dozens of them, hundreds, an army of engineered killers bred for one purpose, to annihilate humanity and claim Earth for their masters. Brian's grip tightened on his rifle, his jaw clenching. They had to destroy this place, burn it to the ground, but first they needed a distraction. He turned to the dragon, meeting its fiery gaze. The beast huffed, twin plumes of smoke jetting from its nostrils. It could sense his intent through their link, the images he pushed into its mind. Fire, destruction, chaos. With a roar that shook the chamber, the dragon reared back its maw opening wide. Gouts of white-hot flame erupted from its throat, washing over the rows of cylinders. The reinforced glass cracked and shattered under the onslaught, fluid gushing across the floor in steaming rivers. Alarms shrieked, the chamber's lights flashing red. Brian could hear shouts echoing from distant corridors, the thud of booted feet on stone. The Vulcan guards were coming. They scattered, vanishing into the labyrinth of passageways. Explosions soon rocked the fortress, the walls shuddering as charges detonated deep within its guts. Clouds of acrid smoke belched from vents and fissures, the stench of melting circuitry and charred flesh choking the air. Brian charged up a ramp, following the tug of the neural link in his mind. Kalar was close, he could feel it. The warlord's presence was like a dark star, a singularity of malice and hate that drew him inexorably onward. He burst into the inner sanctum. A cavernous hall of jet-black stone shot through with veins of glowing lava. Crimson light pulsed in time with the beating of some unseen heart, the air shimmering with blistering heat. And there at the hall's centre stood Keller. The warlord was clad in obsidian armour, his scales glistening like oil. His eyes burned with the same hellish light as the lava, his maw twisted in a cruel smile. "'Welcome, Brian,' Keeler hissed, his voice a razor scraping against bone. "'I've been expecting you.' Brian raised his rifle, aiming for the warlord's head. "'It's over, Keller. Your army is destroyed. Your fortress is crumbling. Surrender now, and I might let you live.' Kellar laughed, the sound like shattering glass. "'You think you've won. You think you've beaten me.' He spread his arms, claws flexing. "'You have no idea what you're facing, human.' He snapped his fingers, and a hidden door ground open behind him. A shape emerged from the shadows, a hulking form that dwarfed even the dragon. Brian's blood ran cold as he took in the creature, his rifle lowering unconsciously. It was a monster out of nightmare a twisted amalgamation of every apex predator in the galaxy. Scales and fur and chitin blended together in a horrific patchwork, muscles bulging beneath armoured skin. Fangs like swords jutted from its maw, its eyes blazing with a feral alien intelligence. Behold my greatest creation, Kalar crowed, the ultimate predator, the perfect killing machine, and it obeys only me. The creature lunged, moving with a speed that defied its bulk, Brian barely had time to dive out of the way, the monster's claws raking the air where he had been standing. He rolled to his feet, rifle spraying plasma bolts that ricocheted off the creature's hide like rain. Kaler attacked from the other side, a whirlwind of obsidian blades and ripping talons. Brian parried desperately, calling on every scrap of skill and training he possessed, but it wasn't enough. He was driven back, step by step, 
the monster and the warlord pressing their advantage. A blow slipped through his guard, Keller's claws raking across his chest. Searing pain exploded through him, his armor parting like paper. He staggered, blood pouring from the wound, his vision swimming. The monster lunged, jaws gaping. Brian braced himself for the end, his rifle rising in one last defiant gesture, but the blow never came. A roar split the air, a sound of pure, primal fury. Brian's dragon slammed into the monster from the side, teeth and claws ripping into its flesh. The two titans rolled across the floor, a writhing mass of scales and fury. Brian's wolf and tiger leaped into the fray, darting in to slash and tear before bounding away. Even the tamed Vulcan predator joined the battle, its loyalty to Brian overriding its natural instincts. Brian staggered to his feet, blood running into his eyes. Kalar was stalking towards him, his maw split in a vicious grin. Brian met the warlord's charge head-on, his rifle forgotten, his hands wreathed in crackling energy from his suit's power cells. They crashed together like two stars colliding, the shockwave cracking the obsidian floor. Brian rained down blows on Kalar's armor, the alien metal buckling and splitting beneath his enhanced strength. Kalar fought back savagely, his claws leaving glowing rents in Brian's suit, but Brian ignored the pain, ignored the blood dripping into his eyes. All that mattered was putting this monster down, ending the threat to his world once and for all. He pummeled Kayla with all the rage and desperation of a species fighting for its survival, his fists rising and falling like pistons. And then, with a final titanic effort, he seized Kellar's head in both hands and twisted, the warlord's neck snapping with a sickening crack. The light faded from Kalar's eyes, his body going limp in Brian's grip. Brian let the corpse fall, his chest heaving, his vision greying at the edges. He turned to see his predators standing over the twitching remains of Kalar's monster, their fangs and claws dripping with ichor. It was over. They had won. But as Brian looked around at the destruction they had wrought, at the blood pooling on the shattered obsidian, he knew that the cost had been high. He could only pray that it had been worth it. He staggered towards his companions, his legs threatening to give out beneath him. There was still work to be done, still a war to be won. But for now, for this one moment, Brian let himself savor the victory. Earth was safe, his predators were alive, and the galaxy had just learned a valuable lesson. Never underestimate the bond between a human and their animals. It was a force that could topple empires and reshape worlds. The genetically engineered super predator lunged at Brian, its maw gaping wide to reveal rows of razor sharp teeth. Brian dodged to the side, the creature's hot breath searing his skin as it passed. The dragon slammed into the super predator, knocking it off balance. Brian's wolf and tiger leaped onto the creature's back, claws ripping through armored hide. The super-predator roared in fury, thrashing to throw off its attackers. Brian charged at Keller, a neural link device clutched in his fist. The Vulcan warlord met his attack head-on, obsidian claws slashing the air. Brian ducked under Kilar's swipe and lunged forward, slamming the device against the Vulcan's temple. Kilar howled as a flood of sensory data surged into his mind. The screeching of claws on stone, the stench of blood and burnt flesh, the searing heat of the dragon's flames. He staggered back, eyes unfocused, his control over the super-predator slipping. The creature, sensing its master's weakness, turned on Kayla with a snarl. It stalked forward, muscles coiling to pounce. Brian, seeing the danger, reached out with his own neural link, pouring all his willpower into a single command. Stop! The super-predator froze, caught between two conflicting orders. Brian pushed harder, gritting his teeth with the effort. Stand down, he growled. The fight is over. Kellar, shaking off the disorientation, stared at Brian in shock. You, you saved me, he rasped. Why? Brian met the Vulcan's gaze, his eyes hard. Because I believe there's more to your creatures than just killing, he said. They have the potential to be so much more, if we work together. Kellar barked a harsh laugh. Work together after all this? He gestured to the destruction around them, 
the bodies of fallen predators and Vulcan guards alike. Yes, Brian said firmly. Look at my team at the bond we share. It goes beyond master and beast. We're partners, equals. Your predators could have that too, but not through force and fear. Kalar looked at the dragon, at the way it stood protectively over Brian's wolf and tiger. He saw the trust in their eyes, the loyalty that went beyond mere training. Slowly, reluctantly, he nodded. Perhaps you're right, he admitted. Perhaps there is another way. He held out a clawed hand, an offering of truce. Brian reached out to clasp it, and an alarm shrieked through the facility, red lights flashing. A voice crackled over the intercom, panicked and urgent. Containment breach in Sector 7G. Experimental subjects loose. Repeat experimental subjects loose. Brian and Kalar exchanged a look of dread. The rogue scientists, Kalar hissed, they've done something. A screech echoed through the halls, a sound that made Brian's blood run cold. It was like nothing he had ever heard before, a primal, unhinged cry of pure savagery. Kalar paled, his scales going ashen. The mutagens, he whispered. They must have used the unstable mutagens. Brian didn't need to ask what that meant. The look on Kalar's face said it all. Whatever was coming, it made the super predator look like a tame kitten. He readied his pulse rifle, checking the charge. Beside him, his predators tensed, ready for battle. The dragon huffed, smoke curling from its nostrils. Looks like that truce will have to wait, Brian said grimly. First, we need to clean up your mess. Keller snarled, but there was no real heat behind it. Our mess now, human, he said. Like it or not, we're in this together. Together. The word hung in the air between them, a fragile bridge spanning a chasm of mistrust and enmity. Brian knew it wouldn't be easy, knew that centuries of hatred and conflict couldn't be erased in a single moment. But as he stood shoulder to shoulder with his former enemy, facing down a horror of their own making, he felt a flicker of hope. It was a start, however small, a first step on a long and difficult road. The screeching grew louder, the sound of claws on stone drawing closer. Brian raised his rifle, his finger hovering over the trigger. Beside him, Kalar flexed his claws, his eyes narrowed to slits. They exchanged a final look, a silent acknowledgement of the battle to come. Then, as one, they turned to face the oncoming storm. Brian sprinted towards the facility's control room, his heart pounding in his chest. Kalar's clawed feet scraped against the stone floor as he ran beside him, the Vulcan's eyes narrowed with fierce determination. Behind them, the screeches and roars of the mutated predators echoed through the corridors, a chilling reminder of the chaos they had unleashed. Kalar nodded, his scales glistening in the pulsing red light. I'll have my soldiers hold the line while you work. He barked a series of guttural commands into his wrist communicator, and a phalanx of armoured Vulcans took up defensive positions in the hallway. Brian burst into the control room, his fingers flying over the holographic interface as he hacked into the facility's mainframe. Lines of code scrolled across the screen, the system's firewalls crumbling under his assault. With a final keystroke, he broke through, gaining access to the security protocols. I'm in, he called out, activating containment measures now. Energy barriers flickered to life, sealing off sections of the complex. The mutated predators slammed against the walls of their makeshift prisons, their howls of rage reverberating through the structure. Brian worked feverishly, manipulating the force fields to corral the beasts into ever smaller enclosures. In the hallways, Kalar and his soldiers fought like demons, their weapons spitting plasma as they held back the tide of mutated flesh. Brian's own team joined the battle, the dragon's flames illuminating the corridors in a hellish glow. The wolf and tiger moved in perfect synchronicity, their claws and fangs ripping through twisted hide and bone. For a moment, it seemed as though they might turn the tide, but then a massive shape burst through the energy barrier, its body a grotesque fusion of multiple predatory species. Claws like scythes tore through metal and stone, and a maw filled with jagged teeth dripped with caustic saliva. The creature charged towards Brian and Keeler, its misshapen head swiveling between them as if trying to decide which to devour first. 
The two leaders exchanged a quick glance, a silent understanding passing between them. They had come too far to fall now. As one, they leaped into action, their movements a blur of speed and precision. Brian ducked beneath a sweeping claw, his pulse rifle barking as he fired point-blank into the monster's flank. Kellar vaulted over its back, his obsidian blades carving deep furrows into its flesh. They fought in perfect harmony, anticipating each other's moves as if they had trained together for years. Brian rolled beneath the creature's belly, his rifle spitting plasma, while Kellar rained down blows from above, his claws a whirlwind of destruction. But even their combined might wasn't enough. The mutant predator shrugged off their attacks, its wounds sealing almost as quickly as they were inflicted. It lashed out with blinding speed, catching Kellar across the chest and sending him flying. Brian found himself backed into a corner, the monster's fetid breath hot on his face. In that moment, time seemed to slow. Brian reached out with his mind, his neural link blazing with desperate urgency. He poured every ounce of his will into a single wordless command. Burn. The dragon, sensing its master's plight, unleashed a torrent of white-hot flame that engulfed the mutant predator. The creature shrieked as it was incinerated, its flesh sloughing off in blackened sheets. In seconds, it was reduced to a smoldering husk, its ashes drifting on the scorched air. Brian sagged against the wall, his chest heaving. Kalar limped to his side, the Vulcan's armor smoking and pitted. Together, they surveyed the battlefield, taking stock of their losses and their hard-fought victory. But there was no time to rest. The remaining mutants still prowled the facility, and the rogue scientists who had created them needed to be brought to justice. Brian and Kalar rallied their forces, their newfound alliance forged in the crucible of combat. They moved through the complex like a well-oiled machine, Brian's team and Kellar's soldiers working in seamless coordination. One by one, the remaining mutants were cornered and destroyed, their twisted forms no match for the combined might of human ingenuity and Vulcan ferocity. At last, they confronted the scientists responsible for the outbreak, the men and women who had sought to twist nature to their own ends. The researchers cowered before Brian and Kalar, their faces pale with fear. You've lost, Brian growled. It's over. But the lead scientist, a gaunt Vulcan with cold, calculating eyes, simply sneered. You think this is the end? This is only the beginning. The strong will always prevail, and the weak will be culled. That is the way of the universe. Kalar snarled, his claws flexing. Strength comes in many forms. Adaptability, cooperation, the will to forge a better path. Those are the qualities that will ensure our survival, not mindless savagery. Brian nodded, his eyes hard. We will find a new way forward together, and we will make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. The scientists were taken into custody, their equipment and research confiscated. Brian and Kayla stood amidst the ruins of the facility, the weight of the future heavy on their shoulders. They had won the battle, but the war for the soul of their species, for the very fate of the galaxy, had only just begun. Brian turned to Kaler, extending his hand. The Vulcan clasped it firmly, his grip strong and unyielding. In that moment, an understanding passed between them, a recognition of the challenges that lay ahead and the strength they would need to face them. Together, they walked out of the facility and into the harsh light of Vulcan's sun, the dragon and Brian's team fell into step behind them, a united front against the darkness that threatened to engulf them all. The path forward would be difficult, fraught with peril and uncertainty, but for now they had each other, and the knowledge that even the most implacable of foes could find common ground in the face of annihilation. The future was theirs to shape, and they would not let this chance slip through their fingers. The age of predator and prey was over. The era of cooperation and coexistence had begun. As the smoke cleared from the battle-scarred facility, Brian and Kellar stood amidst the wreckage, their chests heaving with exertion. The mutated predators lay dead at their feet, their twisted forms a testament to the horrors they had faced together. Brian turned to Kellar, his eyes alight with a newfound respect for his former adversary. We make a pretty good team, he said.
extending his hand. Keller clasped Brian's forearm, his grip firm and unyielding. Indeed, our combined strength is greater than the sum of its parts. Perhaps there is a future for our species beyond war and conflict. Brian nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. Imagine what we could achieve if we worked together, not just to fight, but to learn and grow. Your technology, our understanding of these creatures, we could unlock their true potential. Kellar's eyes narrowed, a flicker of interest sparking in their depths. You propose an alliance? More than that, Brian said, his voice growing animated. A partnership. We could study these predators, learn from them, train them to be more than just weapons. They could help us tackle challenges across the galaxy, protecting endangered species, fighting crime, exploring new frontiers. Kelar was silent for a long moment, considering. It would not be easy, he said at last. There are many among my people who would oppose such a radical change. Brian clapped him on the shoulder. Change is never easy but I believe it's worth fighting for. The dragon snorted, a plume of smoke curling from its nostrils as if in agreement. Brian grinned at Keller. See? Even the big guy agrees. Keller allowed himself a rare smile. Very well, let us begin. Over the next few weeks, Brian and Kalar worked tirelessly to lay the groundwork for their joint initiative. They retrofitted the Vulcan facility, into a state-of-the-art research and training center, equipping it with the latest human and Vulcan technology. Teams of scientists and animal handlers from both worlds were brought in to begin studying the predators in earnest, seeking to understand their biology, behavior, and potential. At first, progress was slow. The predators, conditioned for aggression and combat, were wary and resistant to new training methods, but Brian and his team persevered, using positive reinforcement and trust-building exercises to gradually win the creatures over. Slowly but surely, they began to see results. The wolf pack learned to track and apprehend targets without causing undue harm. The tiger mastered complex obstacle courses and search-and-rescue operations. The dragon's fire breath was harnessed as a precision tool for clearing rubble and debris. Kaz's word of their successes spread, Support for the initiative began to grow. More and more humans and Vulcans came to see the value in cooperation and understanding between their species, but not everyone was pleased with the new alliance. On the fringes of Vulcan society, a charismatic leader named Zaxar was gathering followers to his cause. A staunch traditionalist, he viewed the partnership with humans as a betrayal of Vulcan identity and a threat to their way of life. We have become weak, he railed to the cheering crowds. We have forgotten what it means to be predators, to take what we want without fear or mercy. This alliance will be our undoing. At first, Brian and Kalar paid little heed to Zaxar's rhetoric, dismissing him as a fringe element with limited influence. But as the weeks turned into months, they could no longer ignore the growing unrest. Zaxar's followers launched a series of increasingly bold attacks on the joint facilities, sabotaging equipment and destroying valuable research. Brian paced the control room, his jaw clenched with frustration. We can't let Zaxar derail everything we've worked for, he growled. We need to take action. Kellar nodded, his eyes hard. I agree, but we must be careful. Zaxar's influence is spreading like a cancer. If we move against him directly... We risk turning more of my people to his cause. Brian ran a hand through his hair, thinking. Then we need to change the narrative, he said at last. Show the galaxy what our partnership can really achieve. He pulled up a hollow screen, flicking through a series of reports and images. There's a human colony world on the edge of Vulcan space, New Eden. They've been having trouble with a particularly vicious pack of predators that's been attacking their settlements. We could send a team to help. The dragon huffed in agreement, smoke billowing from its nostrils. Brian reached out to pat its scaly flank. Looks like we're going on a field trip, big guy. Within hours, Brian and Kayla had assembled a crack team of their best trainers and predators. They loaded up a sleek Vulcan transport with supplies and equipment, the dragon curling up in the massive cargo hold. 
As the ship lifted off, Brian felt a surge of excitement and purpose. This was what he had been working towards, a chance to make a real difference. But even as they raced towards New Eden, Zaxar was plotting his most audacious move yet. In secret, he had been training his own pack of predators, creatures conditioned to obey only him, their minds twisted by cruel and ruthless methods. Now, as Brian and Kayla's ship streaked across the stars, Zaxar's beasts were already on the ground, stalking the streets of New Eden's capital city. Their orders were simple, cause as much chaos and destruction as possible. Zaxar wanted to make the humans feel weak and vulnerable, to show them that the Vulcans were the only ones who could keep them safe. What better way to do that than to unleash monsters in their midst? As the transport entered New Eden's atmosphere, Brian frowned at the readouts on his console. Something was wrong. The city below was in turmoil, fires raging out of control, screams and sirens echoing through the streets. He exchanged a grim look with Kayla. We're too late. The ship touched down on the outskirts of the city, the ramp lowering with a hiss of hydraulics. Brian and his team charged down the ramp, weapons at the ready. The dragon took to the skies, its massive wings stirring up clouds of dust and debris. As they entered the city, the true extent of the devastation became clear. Buildings lay in ruins, their windows shattered and walls crumbling. Bodes littered the streets, torn and bloody. And stalking through the carnage, their eyes glowing with feral hunger, were Zaxar's predators. Brian cursed under his breath. He had seen these creatures before in the pits of the Vulcan facility, but never like this, never so utterly twisted and deranged, their once proud forms warped into grotesque parodies of themselves. Kellar snarled, his claws flexing. Zaxar has gone too far, he must be stopped. Brian nodded grimly. Then let's end this. He raised his rifle, sighting down the barrel at the nearest beast. For New Eden. For the future. With a roar of defiance, Brian and Kellar led their team into battle. The fate of two worlds hanging in the balance. Plasma bolts seared the air as Brian and his team engaged Zaxar's predators, the twisted creatures lunging at them with reckless ferocity. The dragon swooped and dove, unleashing torrents of flame that incinerated the beasts by the dozens. But for every monster they felled, two more seemed to take its place, an endless tide of teeth and claws. Brian ducked as a massive paw swiped at his head, the claws missing his face by inches. He rolled to his feet and fired, the plasma bolt catching the creature between the eyes. It crumpled, its skull a smoking ruin. Beside him, Kalar was a blur of motion, his blades flashing as he carved a path through the horde. His armor was dented and scorched, the Vulcan's scales slick with sweat and blood. But still he fought on, his eyes blazing with determination. In the distance, Brian could see Zaxar standing atop a ruined building, his arms outstretched as he urged his beasts forward. The Vulcan's face was twisted in a mask of hate and triumph, his voice rising above the din of battle. Oh, you see now the true face of the humans, he bellowed. Weak, pathetic, they cannot even defend their own without our help. Brian gritted his teeth, anger surging through him. He had come here to save lives, to prove that humans and Vulcans could work together for the greater good. And now Zaxar was using this tragedy as a twisted propaganda stunt. He turned to Kellar, his voice raw with emotion. We have to stop him now. Kellar nodded, his eyes hard as flint. Agreed, but we cannot let these creatures run rampant any longer. Brian's mind raced, a desperate plan taking shape. The dragon, he said urgently. If we can lure Zaxar's predators into a tight group, a single blast of fire breath could take them all out at once. Keller hesitated for a moment, then nodded. It's risky, but it may be our only chance. Brian reached out with his mind, feeling for the familiar presence of the dragon. He projected his plan directly into its consciousness, a series of images and sensations. The dragon huffed in acknowledgement, banking sharply to begin its run. With a shout, Brian and Kalar began to fall back, drawing Zaxar's predators after them. The beasts surged forward, their eyes glowing with anticipation of the kill. Brian and Kalar led them on a twisting path through the ruined streets, 
always staying just out of reach, always taunting them with the promise of fresh meat. Slowly but surely, they herded the creatures into a tight knot, their bodies pressed together in a seething mass of fur and scales. Above them, the dragon circled, waiting for the signal. Just as the predators were about to overtake them, Brian and Keelar dove to either side, rolling clear of the blast zone. At the same instant, the dragon opened its maw, a torrent of white-hot flame pouring forth like the wrath of an angry god. The inferno engulfed the predators, their howls of agony drowned out by the roar of the flames. In seconds their bodies were reduced to ash, their twisted forms crumbling to dust on the scorched earth. Brian staggered to his feet, his armor smoking and blistered. Kelar limped to his side, his face grim. Together they turned to face Zaxar, the Vulcan's eyes wide with shock and horror. It's over, Zaxar, Brian called out, his voice ringing with authority. Your monsters are dead. Your plan has failed. Surrender now, and we may yet find a peaceful resolution. With a final snarl of defiance, Zaxar activated a device on his wrist, his form shimmering and then vanishing in a burst of teleportation energy. Brian cursed, lowering his rifle. Kela placed a hand on his shoulder, his grip firm. We will find him, he promised, and we will bring him to justice. But for now, we have won a great victory. Brian nodded, exhaustion settling over him like a shroud. He looked out over the ruined city, at the human colonists emerging from their hiding places, their faces etched with fear and hope. We have a lot of work ahead of us, he said quietly. Rebuilding, healing, finding a way forward, but we'll do it together, humans and Vulcans, side by side. Kellar nodded, a fierce light in his eyes, as it should be as it must be if we are to survive the challenges to come. The dragon landed beside them, its scales shimmering in the sunlight. Brian reached out to rest his hand on its snout, feeling the warmth of its breath on his skin. For a moment, he allowed himself to imagine a future where creatures like this were no longer weapons, but allies, partners. It was a dream worth fighting for, he thought, a dream that, thanks to the bravery and sacrifice of those who had stood with him today, might one day become a reality. The colony burned, acrid smoke filling the air as Brian and Kalar battled Zaxar's cybernetically enhanced predators. Plasma bolts seared the ground, the screeches of the beasts mingling with the cries of the colonists. Brian's dragon swooped low, unleashing a torrent of flames that incinerated a pack of snarling canines. But Zaxar's forces were relentless, their augmented bodies shrugging off wounds that would have felled lesser creatures. A massive serpent, its scales gleaming with metallic implants, lunged at the dragon, its fangs sinking deep into the beast's flank. The dragon roared in agony, its wings faltering. Brian screamed, the dragon's pain lancing through his mind like a white-hot blade. He could feel the creature's fear, its desperation, as if it were his own. With a roar of fury, he rallied his team, urging them forward in a final, desperate charge. Keller, seeing the critical moment, barked a command into his communicator. The air shimmered, and a squadron of Vulcan commandos materialized atop genetically engineered flying predators, their armor glinting in the sunlight. The aerial assault tore into Zaxar's ranks, laser fire raining down like the wrath of an angry god. Seizing the opportunity, Brian leaped atop a towering colony structure, his eyes locked on Zaxar's position. The Vulcan traditionalist snarled, his claws extending as he charged to meet Brian's attack. They clashed in a blur of steel and scales, their movements a deadly dance. As they grappled, Brian poured every ounce of his will into his words, trying to reach the Vulcan's sense of honor. Zaxar, listen to me. This alliance, it's the only way forward. We can build a future together, humans and Vulcans. A future of cooperation, not conflict. He pressed his attack, his claws raking across Brian's armor. Brian staggered, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Zaxar loomed over him, his maw opening wide for the killing blow. At the last second, Keller lunged between them, his blades catching Zaxar's claws with a shriek of metal on metal. 
the two Vulcans strained against each other, their faces inches apart. Suddenly a deafening roar split the air. Zaxar's own cybernetically enhanced feline predator, a monstrous creature of fangs and metal, leaped at its master, its claws tearing into Zaxar's back. The Vulcan howled in shock and pain, his concentration shattered. In that moment, Brian understood. During the battle he had reached out with his mind, forming a tenuous link with Zaxar's beast. That link, born of desperation, had now turned the creature against its cruel master. Together, Brian and Kalar struck, their blows driving Zaxar to his knees. The Vulcan traditionalist looked up at them, his eyes wide with disbelief. How? he rasped. How could you turn my own beast against me? Brian shook his head, exhaustion etched into every line of his face. Not against you, Zaxar. With us. This is what our alliance means. A chance for all of us, humans, Vulcans, even the Predators, to be more than what we were, to be better. As the battle ended and the smoke began to clear, Brian and Keeler stood amidst the ruins, their armor battered and scorched. The road ahead would be long, the challenges immense, but with their partnership forged in the heat of combat and a growing army of loyal predators at their side, they felt a flicker of hope. A hope for a galaxy where the strong protected the weak, where differences were celebrated, not feared. A galaxy where even the most fearsome creatures could find a higher purpose. Together, they would build that future, one battle at a time. The dragon, its wounds already healing, landed beside Brian, its massive head nuzzling his shoulder. Brian smiled, running his hand along its armoured scales. The bond between them, once forged in desperation, had now been tempered in the fires of war. They had won this battle, but the war was far from over. There would be other challenges, other enemies who sought to destroy the fragile peace they had fought so hard to achieve. But for now, in this moment of hard-won victory, Brian allowed himself to believe. To believe in the strength of the human spirit, in the power of compassion and understanding. To believe that even the most ancient of rivalries could be overcome, that even the most savage of beasts could be tamed by the power of empathy and trust. With Kalar at his side, and an army of predators at his back, Brian turned his gaze to the stars, ready to face whatever challenges the galaxy had in store. The hunt was on, but this time they would be the ones doing the hunting. The hunting for a better tomorrow, for a future where all species could thrive in harmony. The dragon roared, its voice echoing across the shattered colony, a sound of defiance, of unity, a sound that seemed to say, We are here, we are strong, and we will never stop fighting for what we believe in. Brian grinned, his heart swelling with pride and determination. The galaxy would learn to fear that roar, to respect the power of the bond between humans, Vulcans, and the magnificent beasts they had tamed. Together they would forge a new legend, a new chapter in the annals of galactic history, a chapter where the predators became the protectors, where the hunters became the heroes. The battle was over, but the war had just begun, and Brian, Kayla, and their army of loyal beasts would be there, on the front lines, fighting for the future they believed in, a future of unity, of strength, and of endless possibility. The dragon spread its wings, the sunlight glinting off its metallic scales. Brian climbed onto its back, his eyes alight with the fire of determination. Kalar joined him, his claws gripping the dragon's armoured hide. Together they rose into the sky, the wind whipping at their faces, the roar of the dragon drowning out the sounds of the shattered colony below. They had won the battle, but the war stretched out before them, vast and unknowable. But they would face it as they had faced every challenge thus far. Together, united by a bond that transcended species and culture, a bond forged in the heat of battle and tempered by the power of trust and understanding. The galaxy would never be the same. The age of the Predator had dawned, and Brian and Kayla would be there to lead the charge, to forge a new path through the stars. As the smoke cleared from the shattered colony, Brian and Kayla stood side by side, their armor battered and scorched. The battle had been won, but at a great cost, 
the once thriving settlement lay in ruins, its buildings crumbled and streets strewn with the broken bodies of Zaxar's twisted creations. In the days that followed, Brian and Keelar worked tirelessly to rebuild what had been lost. They salvaged what they could from the wreckage, using the resources to establish new training facilities and research centers across both human and Vulcan space. It was a daunting task, but one they tackled with grim determination. As they delved deeper into the secrets of the Predators, however, a disturbing truth came to light. The cybernetic enhancements used by Zaxar's creatures bore a striking resemblance to technology long thought lost, that of the ancient Kilnock race. This doesn't make sense, Brian muttered, poring over the data they had collected. The Kilnock vanished eons ago. How could Zaxar have gotten his hands on their technology? Kelar's eyes narrowed, his claws tapping against the console. There may be more to this than we realize. We must investigate further. Their search led them to the edges of known space, to a remote and uncharted world. As their ship entered orbit, the sensors picked up signs of advanced technology on the surface, far beyond anything they had encountered before. They descended to the planet in a small shuttle, the hull shuddering as it passed through the turbulent atmosphere. When they emerged from the clouds, they found themselves flying over the ruins of a vast city, its towering spires and sprawling plazas long since overtaken by the encroaching jungle. Brian set the shuttle down on the outskirts of the city, the landing gear sinking into the soft loam. He and Kayla stepped out into the humid air, their predators fanning out behind them. As they made their way into the heart of the city, the eerie silence pressed in on them from all sides. The only sounds were the chirping of alien birds and the soft tread of their own footsteps on the cracked and overgrown pavement. Suddenly a flurry of movement caught Brian's eye. He spun, pulse rifle at the ready, as a group of heavily armed warriors emerged from the shadows. Their armor was unlike anything he had ever seen, all sleek curves and glowing circuitry. Kilnock, Keller hissed, his claws flexing. But how? They were supposed to be extinct. Brian stepped forward, his grip tightening on his rifle. We're not going anywhere until we get some answers. What is this place? How did your technology end up in the hands of a Vulcan extremist? The Kilnock leader laughed, the sound harsh and grating. You fools. We are the original creators of the Apex Predators, the ones your pathetic races have been squabbling over like children. And now you dare to challenge our dominion? With a roar, the Kilnock opened fire, bolts of searing energy scorching the air. Brian and Kellar dove for cover, their predators leaping forward to meet the enemy head-on. Claws raked against armor, fangs sank into flesh, and the ruins echoed with the sounds of savage combat. Brian rolled to his feet, downing a Kilnock warrior with a well-placed shot. Beside him Kellar was a whirlwind of blades and fury, his eyes burning with the fire of battle. But even as they fought, Brian could see that they were hopelessly outmatched, the Kilnock predators were like nothing they had ever faced before, their genetically engineered bodies bristling with weaponry and armor. A searing pain lanced through Brian's shoulder, spinning him around. He looked up to see a Kilnock warrior standing over him, energy blade raised for the killing blow. Suddenly Kayla was there, throwing himself between Brian and the enemy. The blade pierced his chest, the tip emerging from his back in a spray of blood. Though... Brian screamed, catching Kayla as he fell. The Vulcan's eyes were wide with shock, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Brian, he whispered, his voice barely audible over the din of battle. You must finish this. Protect our alliance. Stop the Kilnock. With a final shuddering breath, Keller went limp in Brian's arms, his eyes staring sightlessly at the alien sky. Grief and rage surged through Brian's veins, a white-hot fury that threatened to consume him. He gently lowered Keller's body to the ground, then rose to his feet, his eyes blazing with determination. Rally to me, he roared, his voice cracking with emotion. For Kayla, for the Alliance. His remaining predators surged forward, their roars mingling with his own. At their head the dragon limped into view, its scales still bearing the scars of its earlier battles. Its eyes met Brian's, and in that moment... He knew what had to be done. With a wordless cry, Brian charged towards the Kilnock leader, his
his predators close on his heels. Bolts of energy sizzled past him, searing his flesh, but he ignored the pain, his focus narrowing to a single, all-consuming purpose. The dragon leaped into the air, its wings straining as it climbed above the battlefield. It hovered there for a moment, its gaze locked on the Kilnox's central control spire, the nexus of their power. Then, with a roar that shook the very foundations of the city, the dragon dove, its jaws opening wide. A torrent of white-hot flame erupted from its throat, engulfing the spire in a maelstrom of fire and fury. The Kilnock predators, their control systems overloaded by the destruction of the spire, turned on their masters, their programming subverted by the dragon's sacrifice. Claws and fangs tore into Kilnock flesh, and the ruins ran red with blood. Brian reached the Kilnock leader just as the spire collapsed, the ground shaking beneath his feet. The alien warrior turned to face him, his armor smoking and sparking. Thayosti cannot as win, the leader growled, his voice distorted by static. The Kilnock will rise again. Brian's grip tightened on his rifle, his finger hovering over the trigger. Not today, he said, his voice cold as the void, and not ever again. He pulled the trigger the plasma bolt searing through the leader's helmet and into the flesh beneath. The Kilnock crumpled, his body hitting the ground with a dull thud. Around him the city was collapsing, the ancient structures crumbling under the onslaught of fire and destruction. Brian staggered through the debris, his vision blurring with exhaustion and grief. Fair at last he emerged from the ruins, his armor battered and scorched, his body aching with a thousand wounds. He looked up at the sky, at the stars glittering cold and distant above. Kelar was gone and the dragon with him, but their sacrifice had not been in vain. The Kilnock were defeated, their ancient menace buried beneath the rubble of their own city. And yet, as Brian limped towards the waiting shuttle, he knew that the true fight was only just beginning. There would be other challenges, other enemies to face. But he would meet them head on for the sake of the Alliance, and for the memory of those who had fallen. The galaxy was a vast and dangerous place, but with the strength of his predators at his side, and the wisdom of Kalar's legacy to guide him, Brian knew that he would never stop fighting for what was right. No matter the cost. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.